What's going on, YouTube? Rukari back with another episode of the Minotaur Hotel. We are committed to helping Asterian translate and digitize his language while poor Kota and Luke work on projects for us. But we're going to keep doing this because we're trying desperately to get him to, to translate everything. You and Asterian, review your findings from the previous session. All right, we have pictures of all the writings stored in the Ashmolean M Museum in Oxford and the Heracleon Archaeology archaeological museum in Crete. That's a good starting point. We also have a list of re researchers we can contact. I can speak words. I've organized the pictures and documents so you can get started translating them. Thank you, Rukari. Let's get right to it. Asterion begins translating the images of the tablets one by one while you type what he says. Asterion chuckles. This one is definitely graffiti of some sort. I'm not surprised. Archaeologists found Roman graffiti in the ruins of Pompeii. What does it say? Oh, oh it's very dirty. Asterion clears his throat, a little snigger breaking his decorum for just a moment. Miharos, your wife is a whore. Twas not Zeus who visitor, visited her in the night and cuckolded you. But Gitanitos, the baker's son, the entire village knows, you absolute fucking moron. Okay, bro, jeez, man, that's harsh. Asterion can barely hold in his laughter. And below here, it says, limp dick piece of shit. Can you blame her? Wow, the Minoans were fucking brutal. <laughs> Am I? Hmm. Asterion calms down. Maybe we can skip that one. I don't want the scholars to think we're shitposting. What does it mean to shit post? I'll explain some other time. Basically, I don't want them to think we're just making this up. Hmm, yes, I agree with you then. As well, perhaps it will be funnier if they find out by themselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's, like I said, like with the Greek stuff in Pompeii, or with the Roman stuff in Pompeii. <laughs> Also, we'll probably need to come up with a cover story for how we got these translations, yeah? I think I read somewhere about prints of movies that were thought to be lost, which ended up in some random guy's private collection. That wouldn't be much different from what we have going here. That's true. We could say that we're art thieves and we can't disclose where we got these from. That sounds difficult to believe. How would art thieves come up with the translations? Good point. Maybe we can say we're independent researchers in contact with art thieves and grave robbers and we can't disclose our sources then? You'd be surprised, but there are lots of people on the internet who just stumble upon solutions to problems that have baffled scientists for decades by complete accident. And people who do independent research out of love for their discipline. That does not entirely convince me. We should think about it some more while I work on these. You spend the rest of the afternoon with Asterion, helping him write down his translations into the document, even, le even letting him do it himself from time to time to practice typing and using a word processor. By the end of the day, he has mastered the art of copy-pasting text and images, and you both have your perfect cover story. Don't know what our cover story is, but we've got one. We completed a project! Do you want to complete your research or continue working towards something else? I can complete- okay, so we can create a swimming pool now. Yeah, let's make a swimming pool. I love it. You find the R&D team and one of the cobalts celebrating around one of the bedrock tables in a pile of stacked contracts. Asterion was poring over the documents, waiting for you to arrive. Glad we did something good, I guess. After a short congratulatory speech to the team, Asterion approaches you with the beaming cobalt mimicking his step-wide gait. As you know, human ingenuity never ceases to amaze me. What do you mean? After some back and forth, it was agreed that a vanishing edge pool would be the best choice, but I had never heard of such a thing. But I only needed to research it for a minute before I gladly agreed. It is done now. It was not easy, but it is ready. It involved researching what materials are used today in building pools, picking the place and area, designing it, mapping out the pipes. We even made some artificial plants as decoration. We transformed that whole area into a verdant oasis. All that remains now is to test the pool itself, and our staff seems quite eager to tackle this task. I assume we're joining them as well? Pool party! Naturally. Oh, are they all gonna be naked? I hope not. Ah, fuck! <laughs> 
Speaking of eager, Luke is ready for action the moment he steps onto the deck. Rather than following the rest of the staff towards the changing room, he pulls off his shirt and pants in one swift, rehearsed motion, revealing to the unsuspecting world an American flag patterned speedo. Then, like a majestic crossbeed between flightless bird and colossal walrus, the griffin wastes no time in leaping into the pool with a cry of CANNONBALL! Are you surprised he's been wearing that all along? Kota can only sigh as he picks up after Luke, placing the pile of discarded clothing well away from the water on a nearby sun lounger. Not one bit, Rukari. Not one bit. Though I suppose we should be grateful he's wearing anything at all. Y yeah. The dragon clears his throat, banishing that image from both of your minds. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I shall slip into something more comfortable too. And in private, instead of in front of literally everyone. Left alone, you and Asterion approach the edge of the pool together. Do you know how to swim, Asterion? Of course, my home was close to the sea, not that anywhere in Crete is particularly far from it. You dip a foot in, wiggling your toes and rolling your ankle. It feels just right, refreshing, but not so cold as to make you flinch from the sudden shift in temperature. Asterion mimics you with his left hoof, dipping it into the lapping waters. Is your hoof sensitive enough to feel how cold it is? Not as sensitive as my fingers, no, but I can get an approximation. The Minotaur rolls his pants and rolls up his pants and sits on the edge of the pool, submerging both hooves up to his calves. He leans back, supporting himself with his arms, flicking his ears and swishing his tail. Would you like to hop in too? Perhaps, however, you don't have a swimsuit. Luke drifts by. His wings perform a sluggish underwater backstroke while he floats belly up, exposing the bulge in his skimpy swimwear to the vast sky above. Is that the average attire for swimming in this age? They're common enough. The swimming suits I saw in the motion pictures with Master Jean Marie were completely different. They covered the upper body as well. You mean the old timey striped ones? Indeed, judging by what the others are wearing, I suppose they would be considered old-timey. It is a shame. I sometimes wondered what they would be like to swim in. Uh, I don't think it would be comfortable. I think you'd look cute in one of those. You know what? You might look cute in one of those, actually. Hmm, <laughs> you believe it would be becoming. Thank you, Rukari. However, I think I would prefer to fit in with the rest of the staff. Perhaps I should wear something more modern, then. What would you propose? You take another look at the shameless griffin floating by, and that is enough to spark an idea. Let's go into the changing room, shall we? Next to the path back, next to the path back to the hotel sits a squat building, a door on either end of the facade leading into the men's and women's changing room, respectively. The two of you head over to the men's side, finding a spartan and serviceable setup. Rows of sturdy metal lockers, a few low benches, and along the back wall a line of shower cubicles in which to rinse off. Everyone has already exchanged, has already changed and headed out, affording you and Asterion ample privacy. So, what do you have in mind, Rukari? I think you'll enjoy this. You close your eyes and hum the labyrinth's tune. When the lights of the changing room stop, stop flickering, you find your creation resting in your hands. Surprise! With a flourish, you hand over the newly summoned garment. Similar to Luke's Speedo, but a good size bigger and adorned with a different pattern. Is this... Yep, go ahead and try it on. Dear lord, he's gonna come out in a speedo. You turn around and give Asterion some space to change. In the meantime, you summon swimwear into existence for yourself as well. You already have some of the suitcase back in your room, but, well, why take the time to retrieve it? You'll just have to live with owning a set of two for now. A grunt from behind catches your attention, though you remain facing away to focus on making yourself decent. Is something the matter? It's not too much, is it? No, that is not it. I am grateful, truly, but this material is strange. It is like silk, but not quite. I never taught the hotel to make this sort of cloth. What is it? I'm pretty sure it's a mix of polymers, most likely with a lot of nylon to it. It's sort of, it's a sort of artificial fabric that came into fashion around the 50s or something. Did you write a contract describing this material? No, not me. 
Well, whoever did, their sewing skills are impressive, and it shows even here. Say, do you think Luke ever worked as a tailor? You think it was him? Who else would put in the time to teach the hotel how to make something like this? Plus, there is no hole for a tail. I noticed Luke prefers allowing his to ride over his underwear. You would not know this, but that makes it sit lower. I am sure it is intentional on his part. I never would have guessed. You hear Hysteria and hum a few bars, then the rustling of fabric and a, con and a contented sigh. This is how I would prefer it. Just pierce a hole in the backside, cut it up a bit, add a button, makes it more comfortable for my tail. All with the hotel's magic? Indeed, much simpler than doing it by hand, though I happen to have a few years ex of experience with that as well. Once you finish putting on your swimsuit, and once Asterion signals that he is decent as well, you turn around and see how it looks on him. Oh dear. <laughs> is that the Greek fucking flag? Oh my lord almighty. <laughs> there. Looks good. Looking good, buddy. <laughs> Asterion further adjusts his speedo, testing out how it feels until he hears footsteps approaching from outside. His ears flicker once, twice, grow very still, and his back relaxes as he notices the distinct lack of Luke's clicking claws. What's wrong? There was someone passing by outside just now, and thankfully it was not Luke. As much as I appreciate him, I would rather not hear what he has to say about you and I changing clothes together. Yeah, considering all that we've been through, this is nothing, but he probably wouldn't let us hear the end of it. Neither would he understand that my upbringing was a lot more liberal concerning clothing than the norms of today. This so-called speedo is tighter than what I am used to, but our general attire was just as revealing. But enough about that. Shall we go, my fine lord? After you, my great friend. Yep, pool party. Back outside, the ruckus makes quick work of your secret sweets, your secret's sweet atmosphere, leaving the two of you in the midst of all the mundane reality of the hotel. You catch sight of Luke wand wandering into the shallows, where the cobalts cavort about in water wings and floaties. How do they learn how to make water wings and floaties? Nobody knows. The Griffin soon finds himself becoming a participant in their ambunctious play, though perhaps victim may be more apt. After a minute or so of watching the commotion, Asterion gives you a sideways glance. I do have one question. Is this the Greek flag? Yes. I thought it'd be appropriate. Sue me. You do realize that I have no particular allegiance to mainland Greece, correct? I am Cretan. However, all considered, I do not believe I would feel much connection to the flag of contemporary Crete either. That's reasonable. Still, it does. it really does look good on you. It gladdens me very much that you think so. And I truly did wish to fit in with the others, besides, so I accept your gift. Thank you. Ah, no, not the hiccups, god dang it! Now, shall we go for a swim? You and Asterion return to the pool, side by side, the both of you now dressed for the occasion. You take the Minotaur's towel in your own, then turn towards the line of sun loungers to put them down. A Syrian waits for you, patient and expectant at the poolside. So how should we do this? Wanna just jump in? Jump on in? It is your call. In truth, I... I am a little bit rusty. Long has it been since I've had the chance to go swimming. Well then... Uh, to jump on in or watch him swim? Let's just jump in. You're about to check... You are about to suggest that the two of you should indeed bite the bullet and just jump in together. But where would, where would be the fun in that? The sparkling water, the bright sun above, the voices raised in merriment all around you. It all awakens a sense of childish wonder, does it not? And a sense of childish mischief. I've got an idea. The only warning the Minotaur receives is a wide and playful, playful grin. How about we race a few laps, starting now? Ready, set, go! <laughs> <laughs> Before you can respond, you take a bounding leap into the pool. The cool water surrounds you, dulling your hearing. Instead, you almost feel the stomping of Asterion's hooves on the deck. And then the shockwave of his bulk crashing in washes over you. 
Before you can write yourself, a torpedo shoots past, dragging you along in its wake. Asarian takes the water much better than his lumbering sides would indicate. You recall how Lord Byron also felt freedom and ease in swimming, released from the suffering of clumsy club feet on land. This bovine poet here must be feeling something similar. I didn't know Lord Lord George Gordon Byron had club feet. I need to do some more research on that. I thought he was... I, I, I need to know more about that. He's already at the end of the pool and turned around by the time you make it halfway across, his gaze steady and blank, a man on a mission or a charging bull, until he moves close enough to see you slowing down to watch him. He too slows himself. You did say a few laps, yes? Before you can respond, he's off again, full speed ahead with a deep chortle. Unmanageable creature. When he swoops by again to complete another lap, he even bumps you with his hip. That had to be on purpose. You can't let him get away with it. Grab a sail! You doggy paddle with faux meekness to begin your ruse. His hubris stricken- the hu he, hubris stricken man, fails to notice and focus with all his being on showing you up, it seems. Time after time, you allow Asterion to swoop past, measuring just how fast he's going, waiting for your chance to strike. At last, the perfect opportunity arises as he makes another pass with his tongue sticking out as he slips by. Your hand darts out to grab hold of the dangling appendage behind him. He stops, sputtering in shock at your act of foul play, but his inertia carries you forward, right into his step-wide back. Your arms wrap tight around him, his tail thrashes between your legs. Tag. Asterion wriggles, but he cannot hope to, but cannot hope to break your hold. <laughs> Was this not meant to be a race? Details, details. He huffs, he snorts, at last his broad hands move to stroke and grasp your forearms. I may have overexerted myself a little. Wanna rest for a bit? That would be most appreciated, yes. The Bull of Minos takes a more leisurely swim to the vanishing edge. He does not remove you from his back. The two of you rest on the side of the pool overlooking the valley, taking in the view as Asterion takes in slow, deep, calming breaths. So, a little bit rusty, hmm. If that was you out of practice, I can't imagine how you were in your prime. Well, centuries have passed since I saw this much water, much less had the opportunity to enjoy it. I suppose that I... Missed it? A little grumble calls up his th crawls up his throat, bashful. Moo. He nods. Well, it's gonna be right here for you to enjoy any time you like. Though maybe we should save the horseplay for when it's less crowded. Another nod as he looks around, noticing that the water level seems much lower now. Much of it has overflowed from the basin below the vanishing edge with all his splashing and ma- and bleh. Let's try that one again, shall we? Another nod as he looks around, noticing that the water level seems much lower now. Much of it has overflowed from the basin below the vanishing, vanishing edge with all his splashing and wave making. He hums, discreet, instructing the hotel to create more. She's got to refill the pool really quick. Sorry, guys. After sitting at the edge of the pool for a while, Asterion looks back at you. Rukari, would you like to go dry off? You look up to your bovine companion, giving him a small nod. Sure, I think I've had enough for now. We can probably call this project a complete success at this point. Indeed. The two of you get out of the pool, finding your towels right where you left them on one of the sun loungers. You step away from one another and begin to dry yourselves off. At last, you finish, fold up your towel, and turn to check on the Minotaur's progress. I apologize. This may take a while. Indeed, it appears that Austerian's fur will take a little longer and more than one towel to dry. Even the desert wind seems to be, only, seems to be helping only so much. No problem, buddy. We have all the time in the world. We do, yes. You motion to the poolside chairs. With a grateful nod, the Minotaur moves to splay himself out, hoping to drip dry in the sun's bright rays. As you take a seat next to him, Kota trundles up to, you, to the two of you, carrying a cooler. Hello, Asterion, Rukari. I assume you enjoyed yourselves out there? It was pretty fun. Pretty tiring, too. Well then, may I interest you two in some refreshment? The dragon sets the cooler down and opens the top to display his wares. Dark bottles of beer chilling in fresh ice, which fills the container. That sounds amazing right about now. Asterion? If you wish to partake, then I will join you. Excellent. Two beers, my good man. <laughs> I know. I see that look, Kona. You, you, sh shut up. 
With a servial half bow and a playful smile, the dragon cracks open and hands you a pair of bottles. You pass one to Asteria and then take a long sip of your own. You settle in with your drinks, looking out over the water together. You know, this is pretty nice, just sitting out here with a drink and relaxing, I mean... And with a pool and all, it doesn't feel nearly as miserable. Yes, I can only hope the guests enjoyed as much as we all have been. I'm positive they will. Koda lets out a tiny laugh. You know, it's funny you should say that. I was just thinking how nice it would be to set up a bar out here. What is a nice relaxing day by the poolside without some refreshment, hmm? And while beer is good, a bar would allow us to offer freshly made drinks as well. Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. It would certainly give the guests a little extra incentive to come out and enjoy themselves. Precisely! And, well, in truth, running the lounge has reminded me of how much I enjoy bartending. I think I'll have my hands full with it for a while yet, but I wouldn't mind coming out here to assist with the poolside bar too every now and then. Yeah, that does sound good, and I do appreciate the offer, but I couldn't ask you to handle something like that all on your own, on top of your other responsibilities. As a matter of fact, we should probably get some personnel together to run things out here on a more permanent basis anyway. For starters, we'll definitely need at least a lifeguard or two. Ah, as luck would have it, I was conversing with a guest from the Bahamas who was asking about staff openings just this morning. He's a web designer, but he has worked a few summer jobs as a lifeguard before. It's definitely a start. Go ahead and give me his contact info later. Although we do have to consider that he alone may not be enough for some of the larger guests, especially mythicals who would be too big for a human to pull out of the pool. Yes, I suppose that is something to take into consideration. Well, today is not the day for such topics. We'll figure it all out some other time. I guess so. For now, let's just relax and enjoy ourselves. The dragon cracks open a bottle for himself, lifting it up towards you. I'll drink to that. Koda continues to offer drinks from the cooler, and to have a few himself. Eventually, however, he leaves to the changing room, giving you and Asarian some time alone. Hey buddy, how's it going? The Minotaur looks out at the pool, now almost empty. This was the most fun- Ah, voice cracking, no! <coughs> ah, I hurt myself with- I hurt myself on Koda's voice there a little bit. <laughs> This was the most fun I've had in a long time. Thank you for arranging it, Rukari. Please, it's all for the guests. Although, if I had known how much you enjoy swimming, this would have been a higher priority. In that case, I will have to make sure I come, here to come out here as often as I can, to ensure that the guests are enjoying it, of course. We cannot have your efforts going to waste now, can we? And I would like it very much if you would join me. To, uh, to make sure that no one is horseplaying around too much. You give your partner and co-owner a smile, bumping his shoulder with your own. Yeah, I could do that. No, we had our first pool party episode! Adorable! Oh, uh, I wanted to ask, should I change back to my old clothes? Um, I mean, that... Depends. Are we staying at the pool more? Um, I, you're, you're fine like this? As you wish. I don't know if that was the right decision or not. We added, we added an outdoor swimming pool to the tech folder, and Luke found something, I hope. We found six raw materials, twice what you expected. Other than that, your exploration team didn't make any big discoveries. After your daily tasks are done, you return to the lounge to enjoy a meal and a moment of rest. You scroll to your phone while waiting for Kota to come and take your order. Ten minutes pass in the rigmarole of Kota's glacial politesse? Pol I have no idea what that word means for once in my life. You're well aware of the Eastern Dragon's tendency to take the time to introduce himself. Ah, hiccups again. To have short, courteous conversations with each and every guest. To do all he can to ensure they all have a most relaxing and rejuvenating experience. But the fact of the matter remains that he also has to work in the kitchen. Delays are unfortunate but inevitable now that you're receiving more people. However, it still takes much longer than your worst estimate to be served. A performance artist to whom you are partial has held some new exhibitions in galleries that you cannot see. He strictly disallows photography or videography of his work, so the interest you have in it almost always is almost always met with the frustration of never being able to see any of it in a more direct way than through critic descriptions. You wish you could share this frustration with someone. 
You look up from your phone and search around for the ever-genteel dragon. The quickest of glances reveals no one drifting from table to table to welcome each guest. The warm, gentle pitter-patter of both his feet and his voice is conspicuous for, his for its absence. Kota is nowhere to be seen. Don't tell me he left. Is something wrong? You get up to go check in the kitchen, but as soon as you do, you bump, and quite literally so, into something most unexpected. Eep! Two of the cobalts are cowering next to your legs, barely noticeable under the tables. Their usual rags are gone, replaced by miniature waiter outfits. Their shirts are made of a delicate linen, the vest is tailored to their every measurement, and their bow ties and burgundy aprons are crisp and fresh. One of the cobalts jumps backwards to bolt, but the darker one yanks his companion by the now by the now crumpled collar. With his other hand, he pokes you with a piece of paper until you take it. No, Zepito. First, you get the customer's attention, and then you write their order. Kota yanks the notebook from the cobalt's grasp. And would it hurt to say hello or greetings, like I just spent the morning teaching you? The doe-eyed darlings look downward, dejected and ashamed, barely containing their tears. What a shameful display. They sniffle once, twice, and Kota already regrets raising his voice. I am sorry, little ones. I will handle the orders, so you two go serve Table Six their meals. You've been doing a fantastic job with that. Can you do that for me? The dragon lays a comforting hand on either cobalt's shoulder, and the gentle grace of his kind words reinvigorates the pair's enthusiasm. They scurry off towards the kitchen as Koda addresses you. I'm terribly sorry for the delay, Rukari. I thought they had a solid grasp on this task. It's okay, Koda. I was really distracted. I should have noticed them. I would prefer to greet and take the guest orders myself. It keeps the standards of our establishment high, you see. But at this rate, I don't think I can manage on my own. So you convinced the Cobalts to wait tables? Ah, uh, no. They asked of their own volition. These industrious little things seem to have taken a liking to me and are very eager to help. That said, I do wish their enthusiasm translated to good manners and proper etiquette. They were scrounging around for scraps and wearing tattered clothes when they got here, Koda. One can assume they aren't familiar with that aristocratic table manners. Be more patient with them. They seem to be doing their best. Indeed they are. I am sure they will learn the rope sooner rather than later. And their help is very much appreciated. I mean, at least you got food runners. Gruggy, please, table six is the other way. As he turns, his shoulder spike grips another chunk of his dress shirt. Oops. You think the outfits were a good idea? We'll figure something out eventually. It's better than having them run around wearing rags and patchwork. Oh, where are my banners? What would you like me to get for you, Rikari? Koda takes your order and returns to the kitchen. Then, from the hallway, you catch a familiar tune, a melodic clopping of hooves and chest-rumbling hum. Your friend locks his gaze on you, but before approaching, he meanders about. He nods to the men sitting at the counter, waves to a pair of women snacking to the side, and bows to a family and their children. To you, he smiles, but even after sitting, he can't help but flick his ears and fidget his hooves. I forgot you were wearing that outfit! His open and closed listening expression can often register to some of the guests as blank or stony, but to you, he smiles. Is this not an invitation? You raise your eyebrows and he giggles. You wait for him to speak and he merely snorts and leans back. Your petulant partner leaves you no choice but to take the bait. Seems like you're having a grand old time. Yes, sir. A fine day it had been. And what exactly has made it so fine, hmm? The Minotaur rests his chin on a hand, then scratches his own ears, but his lips remain sealed. The prey shall not deliver itself. The hunter must give chase. Do I need to guess? Perhaps, if you wish to know it all. By the gods, one night, you're, one night you give rights to a man, and not a week passes before he learns to keep secrets. Tell me, what stops me from ordering you to say it? Yourself only. Pardon the impertinence, but... A master you may be, yet leadership you possess more than mastery itself. To be a leader or a master, the distance between the two is greater than the widest sea. At least, last you give me some credit. Now, to guess what secret it is you're keeping. You ruminate, you ruminate on all that's happened so far, all the good and bad. What could leave Asterion in such a state? Could it be something related to Argos? Has the rascal tried and failed to come up with another of his schemes? But you aren't given the chance to consider further. The Minotaur gets antsy and gives in. Let's not tarry. Hear it then. I just had a conversation with a few guests, and they wish to join us as staff. 
That's great news! This hotel, magic or not, is way too big for the four of us to tend alone. Indeed, we will need many more people in our family if we are to fully realize our mission. And the ones who approached me about it seem like fine folk. I have a good feeling about them. Now, Rukari, do, do you... would you consent to it, to expanding our staff? Let's see, if memory serves, we haven't become... haven't we become partners in managing this fine establishment? Isn't that correct? Indeed. Then you have as much decision-making power as I do. If your judgment tells you these are good people, then I trust you. I consent to it, but going forward, let's establish that you're in charge of hiring. You are too kind. In that case, I... could I suggest or ask? You nod, even before he has a chance to finish. We should hold a seminar to welcome and instruct our new staff, don't you think so? You smile, and that says more than any oracle ever did. Well... Hey, we'll hopefully have some new people working for us. Alrighty. So... It looks like we're starting a hiring fair, which is- I feel like this is gonna go on longer than I expected, so I think this is a good enough as place as any to close out our pool day adventure and pro- and con uh, d d delve back into the world of hotel management. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm very excited to see- I want to meet more of the new characters so badly, so I'm hoping we get there soon, but enough shock! I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!